By now we're all familiar with AI, the technology many fear will destroy the labor force or even mankind, but so far has only been able to destroy Facebook. Nonetheless, it's a technology that's still developing, and when I hear news of new models or capabilities, I always test it for one specific task how well it can give forestry advice. And for the most part, results have been disappointing, so I really haven't bothered with it too much. There was a period of time where every company with a domain name was shoehorning in an AI chat in absolutely everything, regardless of whether it made any sense whatsoever. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to integrate AI into my business until I was sure it could provide real value. And for me, an appropriate benchmark for that would be whether or not it could give better information than not only myself, but any other single individual in the entire industry. And honestly, only very recently have I become convinced of the existence of that technical capability. So I built an AI chatbot for forestry utilizing some of these newer models, and I fed it a custom knowledge base of thousands of pages of textbooks and forest service manuals, silvicultural field guides, academic studies, and of course, anything I've ever written. The result is what I truly believe to be the best and certainly most convenient single source of information for small forest landowners and potentially even foresters themselves. So let's look into what I call Forester AI. So this is the page to Forester AI right here. And as you can see, there is a chat box icon down here in the corner. So you just click it and then you can ask away. And I think it's really best to be as specific as possible with your questions. That seems to be what will um, provide the best response. So. I'm just going to give an example of the conditions of my forest and see what it has to say about it. Okay, so my first question here is I have a 130 acre woodlot in Maine. It is a multi-aged mixed wood forest with 130 square feet of basal area. 40 square feet of basal area consist of spruce fir, 60 consist of tolerant hardwoods, and the remaining 30 consist of intolerant hardwoods, mostly white birch. Health and vigor vary across age classes. How should I manage this forest? Let's see what it has to say. So it gave us a very detailed response here, um, and it said, uh, your forest is a diverse multi-age mixed wood stand, which is typical of the Acadian forest region in Maine. This diversity is beneficial for both ecological and economic reasons. Given the multi-age nature of your stand and the mix of species, an irregular shelter wood system could be appropriate. That sounds fair. Uh, this approach can help maintain the diversity of species and age class as well, allowing for periodic timber harvest. Gloops. Group selection for regeneration. To promote regeneration of both shade tolerant and intolerant species, consider using group selection cuts. Create small openings a quarter to half an acre. Yep. Retain mature trees. Keep some mature trees of each species as seed sources and for wildlife habitat. This is especially important for the spruce fir component and any high quality hardwoods. Um, manage for spruce fir components. Since spruce fir make up a significant portion of your stand, consider using single tree selection in areas dominated by these species to maintain their presence. For the hardwood component, focus on improving stand quality over time, remove low quality trees and promote the growth of valuable, valuable species like sugar maple and yellow birch, 100%. White birch consideration. White birch being an intolerant species may require larger openings for regeneration. Consider creating some larger gaps, half to a full acre, uh, specifically for this species, if you want to maintain its presence in the stand. And I like how it specified if you want to maintain its presence. Um, because yeah, if you want to maintain birch trees, you're gonna, it's shade intolerant, meaning it needs full sunlight, so you're gonna have to create larger openings. That's totally accurate. Plan for periodic harvests every 15 to 20 years, removing about 25 to 30% of the stand's basal area each time. This will help maintain the uneven age structure and provide regular income. And of course, I do have a specific tool on silvicultural uh, to plan for this, the harvest planning tool, and it will give you a specific acreage you can harvest every harvest interval and keep it sustainable. I'd recommend following that instead of the advice of the AI, uh, just because it's, it's a more consistent system. Nonetheless, it is providing you some recommendations here. Wildlife considerations. Maintain some standing dead trees, snags, and fallen logs for wildlife habitat. Also consider leaving some areas unharvested as wildlife corridors. So honestly, that is a very high quality response. It's detailed and specific and makes specific recommendations for the different components of the forest. This is what I would expect to see from an actual forester. And most importantly, it's all accurate. Uh, nothing that was said here is problematic in any way. But I can go even further here. So I'm gonna introduce a detail of the presence of beech bark disease in a component of beech and see what it recommends for dealing with that. So I said, the mid-story has a large component of American beech infected with beech bark disease. I'm worried about potential resprouting from beech. How can I treat this? Thank you for providing more information about the beech bark disease and resprouting issues in your forest. 
Based on the research and management strategies available, I can offer some specific recommendations for your situation. And so it gives us multiple strategies to deal with it. Uh, we have a cut stump treatment with glyphosate. Apply a 50% active ingredient glyphosate solution to the outer two inches of freshly cut stumps. That's all accurate. This method has been shown 75% sucker mortality in areas affected by beech bark disease for several years. We have basal bark treatment. Use a basal bark treatment of tri triclopyr. Uh, apply to the full circumference of stems from ground level to approximately 18 inches in height. This method doesn't translocate to the root system, so it won't prevent root suckering, but it will kill the treated stems. Then we have stem injection. For larger stems, use the hack and squirt method with 50% active ingredient glyphosate or triclopyr, 15% as Garlon 4. And then we have cut stump treatment again, which it kind of repeated, but still accurate. And then for small diameter beach, it's recommending either mechanical removal or a foliar application of glyphosate. And then long-term management strategy, promote diverse regeneration by encouraging the growth of other tree species. I mean, that's pretty obvious. Consider retaining some beach trees that show resistance to beach bark disease for genetic diversity and wildlife benefits. Uh, if it exists, sure. Uh, I, I have mixed feelings about that, but certainly that's what the literature says, so it's gonna be uh, showing that to you. Plan for multiple treatments over time as complete eradication of beech is neither possible nor desirable. So there you go. That's, that definitely comes straight from the literature. Timing of treatments. Late summer to early fall is often most effective for herbicide treatments. For cut stump, apply immediately after cutting for best results. And then just tells you to follow regulations. So once again, really great, accurate, and detailed information. And I just want to ask it one more follow-up question just to experiment here. All right, so it is currently February. Is there any herbicide application method that works this time of year? So it kind of gave us the same information, but with some important caveats. The key for winter applications is to avoid frozen wood and ensure the chemical can be absorbed. Warmer winter days above freezing are ideal for treatment. Cut stump and oil-based basal bark methods tend to be most reliable in winter conditions. It's important to note that herbicide effectiveness may be reduced in winter compared to growing season applications. However, winter treatments can still provide control and may be preferable when trying to minimize impacts on other vegetation. Yeah, that's, again, awesome. So I could do this all day. I just want to do one more to kind of go outside of the domain of timber management. Uh, let's kind of go more into the purview of wildlife management. So I'm going to ask it about um, maybe optimizing for barred owl habitat in Vermont. I am a forest landowner in Vermont. I own 50 acres of northern hardwood forest. I want to optimize habitat for barred owls. How should I do this? Okay, so here's what it's recommending. Um, maintain mature forest structure. Barred owls prefer mature, structurally complex forests with a mix of tree species and ages. Aim to keep 70 to 80% of your forest in mature, closed canopy condition. Preserve large trees and snags. Retain large diameter trees larger than 18 inches uh, breast height. Protect wetland areas. These are favorite hunting grounds for barred owls. Promote prey habitat. Maintain areas of dense understory vegetation to support small mammal populations, which are important prey for barred owls. Absolutely. Consider leaving some down woody debris to provide cover for prey species. Minimize disturbance. Limit forest management activities during the breeding season, typically February to July. Now, February does seem a bit early for that, uh, but I am not an expert. And like I said, the benchmark here is whether or not it can provide better answers than I can. And certainly this is a better answer than I could provide. Consider landscape context. If possible, connect your forest to other mature forest patches in the area to create a larger habitat network. Given that your forest is a northern hardwood type, you're in a good position to manage for barred owl habitat. The uneven age management approach is typically used in northern hardwoods, such as single tree and group selection, can be very compatible with creating and maintaining barred owl habitat when implemented thoughtfully. Pretty good, no problems. So I think you guys kind of get the picture. You really can ask it any forestry-related question. Uh, I just wanted to show you how specific you can be and how specific the recommendations can get. So this really is a tremendously powerful tool. And I have to share with you guys, when I was creating this AI rendered picture of a robotic forester, uh, I was having a fun time and I was laughing to myself. I made it resemble one of my old coworkers. Uh, I worked with him early in my career and he was somebody, he was an experienced forester and he was somebody I really looked up to, but he was also somebody who was very fun to tease. Uh, so I dedicated a lot of time and energy finding new and innovative solutions to drive him insane, including uh, dressing up like him one year for Halloween so many years later, I guess this is my latest iteration of that. So shout out to you. So guys, obviously this is still AI and it's not infallible, but the way I have this set up, it's a glorified search engine that parses through a whole compendium of relevant material. 
So it's pretty damn reliable. And if any of you guys are playing around with this and find any obvious errors, just let me know. Um, I've been kind of playing around with this and tweaking it and adding things to the knowledge base and even removing things from the knowledge base and so forth. Um, and I'm gonna continue to do that. Now, last month I released my harvest planning tool for Silvicultural. And at the time I reiterated my objective for the platform, which is essentially to make it a no brainer investment for any forest landowner. And at the time I said that I believed it to be there with the release of that last update. And now with this AI tool, yeah, absolutely. I mean, at this point, I think it's dumb not to join. This thing is like having 24 seven access to a forester. It can't walk your land with you like a forester can, but it can answer your questions as you walk your land. And that is insanely valuable. Honestly, I was learning things as I was testing this thing out. So it's a really great tool. And of course, the Silvicultural, you also get that harvest planning tool. You get the mapping application, you get the growth estimation tool, you get the financial analysis tool, you get the courses. It is by far the best tool and software package for forest landowners out there with ownership of less than, I'll say, a thousand acres. And you can get access to all these features with a one-time purchase of a lifetime membership. And how this has worked is that everyone who has become a member of Silvicultural thus far has gotten access to these new features and releases. And what's going to happen eventually is I'm either going to uh, take away that lifetime membership and it'll just be a monthly subscription, or I'm going to increase the prices uh, depending on a lot of things. So I highly recommend you get on that and purchase a lifetime membership so you're grandfathered in and you get access to all these features and all future developments because I'm gonna make this a lot better. So anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoy this new feature and find it useful and I know you will. So anyway, from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, I will catch you later.